Good morning. Uh, my name is Alyssa Haddad Chin. Uh, I use she, her pronouns. I'm a Lebanese American playwright, among other things. And I'm dialing in from the ancestral lands of the Canarsi and the Muncie, Muncie Lenape nations, currently known as Brooklyn, New York. Um, and if I'm having trouble stringing a sentence together, it's because it's 630 in the morning here. And this is the first time I'm speaking out loud today. Uh, so we're surviving and thriving. And I am so beyond grateful for this fantastic group of Palestinian American artists and, who have agreed to join me at this early hour. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn the mic over to them to introduce themselves. And I'll start with Adam. Oh, well, that is so kind of you, Alyssa. It's um, <laughs> lovely to be here with all of you. My name's Adam. Um, he, him pronouns. I'm also uh, in the same area that Alyssa is in. Uh, what is it, like 30 blocks away? Um, very close, yeah. <laughs> very close. Um, um, I'm a Palestinian American director and administrator, and um, I am really excited to be here with you all at whatever time it is for you, um, real or however you feel. <laughs> um, so uh, I will turn it over to John. Uh, yes, good morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you're tuning in from. It is currently 3 a.m. where I am on the West Coast, so I'm trying to hang in there. Um, I use he, him pronouns. Um, I My name is Jonathan Akawi. Clearly, my thoughts are very um, jumbled, so bear with me. But my name is Jonathan Akawi. I am a Palestinian-American actor, writer, filmmaker, and producer, a multi-hyphenate of many sorts, as one does in the entertainment industry. Um, and I'm very honored and glad to be here and give a voice to our people, especially in a time when our voices are constantly oppressed and shunned. Um, are we doing popcorn? Am I supposed to popcorn to someone else? Or um, I will popcorn to the wonderful Hanin. Good morning and thank you. And John, especially glad to see you up so early. Lovely. Um, so my name is uh, Hanin Arafat Murphy. I am based in the New York City area. I use she, her pronouns. I'm an actor and a writer, and I have a background, if it comes up in this conversation, I thought it might, um, in broadcast media, in news. Um, so I kind of come from, or have talked about Palestine or been, a you know, for in a while in different venues, and uh, I'm happy to be here. Uh, and I'll pass it to Grace. Thank you and good morning to all of you. I'm in New York. Um, my name is uh, Grace Kanawati Vendek. I am a Palestinian Honduran American and I am an um, actress, writer, comedian, and an arts administrator. Pronouns she, her. And um, just very happy to be here with all of you and having this conversation. So I'm just grateful and can't wait to hear all about what everyone has to share. And so, and then, so I'm passing it on to, oh my gosh, Wasim, did I, this, okay. okay. I think I'm the last one, thank you. Save the best for last, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. Salaam alaikum, sabah al-khair, mas al-khair, wherever you are. Um, my name is Wasim al -Zir. I am a New York City-based uh, theater artist. Um, I didn't realize that we were all in New York. How nice. Um, well, John. Um, so many of us are <laughs> in New York. Um, I use he, him pronouns. Um, I'm Palestinian, raised in, a, in North Carolina. Um, and I'm very happy to be here. I have tea to keep me warm and aware. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, and again, thank you all for joining us for session number 16 for the 24 hours for Palestine. We're so thrilled to be able to be here and get to speak. Um, the goal for this session is just to welcome you, essentially, the viewer into our living rooms, coffee, tea in hand, for a shared conversation of what it means to be a Palestinian creative who makes art in the United States. Um, 
I'm very honored to have been asked to curate a panel for this very important effort. Thank you, Sahar. Thank you, Golden Thread. Thank you, Arts to Action. Uh, and while I believe that all of our struggles as Arab people are intertwined, I'm most interested today in listening and hearing specifically from Palestinian artists um, who are navigating this moment and every moment since the beginning of the Israeli occupation in often undiscussed or silenced ways. Um, so while we're aiming for a truly open and honest conversation, I want to remind all viewers, whether you're watching live or, you know, later on the recording, that um, the systematic silencing of Palestinian voices is very real and a very real concern. And so complete honesty is maybe not a realistic expectation for everybody here, but we will do our best and everyone will stay comfortable with whatever that they, they want to share. Um, but that's enough for me. Um, I'm really just excited to turn this over to a roundtable setting with a very simple question. Everyone here is an artist. Everyone here is Palestinian. What does it mean to be at the center of both of these identities and more? And how do you navigate creating work in the US as such? We could start there with whoever would like to take it away. I want to start with a story of the first month of me living in New York City as an artist. Um, I moved here in May of 2018. I had just graduated college, so I was like in my early 20s. And I did some really small reading of like some 10 page monologue or something at NYU. And it wasn't specifically Arab, it wasn't specifically Palestinian. It was, um, I think student, this was years ago, I'm, I'm, I'm forgetting, but I'll get to the point of the story. Um, we, we, performed I, we performed once it, it was a one-time thing i think it was for a grade or something i think it was the um grad school anyway i was the only arab there the only story of arab um origin that was being told and there was a reception after and a director or he, I didn't know who he was, but he identified himself as a director and producer in New York City who's been here for a very long time, connected to NYU in some way, um, was really kind, uh, was really complimentary of the writing and my performance. And we got to, to chatting and he asked me where like my family is from and where, what, what kind of Arab am I essentially? And I told him that I was Palestinian. Um, as I tell anyone who asks where my origins are from, I didn't expect it to be a loaded question, right? This was, again, my first month in New York City. Um, and suddenly the, the direction of the conversation went really, um, like, come in, I have to like, I have to help guide you to survival. Um, you don't want to tell people that here. And I was like, that I'm Palestinian. And he was like, yes, that you're Palestinian. You want to go with Lebanese. You want to go with Jordanian. You don't want to say that you're Palestinian. And I was like, why? And he said, well, there are a lot of opportunities that will be passed by you. If these casting directors, if these directors, if these producers know that that is your identity. And that is an identity that you like proudly wear.
that wasn't the kind of introduction I was expecting into the city. Six years in, I know now that that was real fucking talk. Like that, I mean, like that was, he, he meant what he said. Um, I get now what he meant by it. Um, I wonder, have, did any of you, when you first moved to New York, or I mean, I, I don't know if you're all raised here, but have a, a similar like, hey, warning. If you have another Arab identity, maybe go with that one. I would say, and Wasim, I'm, I'm, I think we're all probably familiar with this sort of story to some degree. I, it's always shocking when it happens to you, and so I would say I'm, you know, I'm sorry because I, I know that's a shocking thing for someone to say to you, having happened to me over the many years. Yeah. So. I grew up in Texas and I came here almost 30 years ago. And in Texas, you said you grew up in North Carolina. I think that people may not have said anything because at least when I grew up in Texas, people didn't know what a Palestinian was, you know? And you come to New York and they know what a Palestinian is, but they've already decided what you are. And so that's most of the time that will come first. Sometimes something else happens. Sometimes it's a very, you get, um, and I'm sure you all feel this to some degree, If you're, especially if your name precedes you before they, you walk in the room, they expect a specific thing. My name is, I only started using Murphy professionally because of an agent asked, telling me that was more useful than having Arafat as my last name, right? My name is very specifically Arab and very specifically Palestinian and to a lot of people, very specifically political. Um, but sometimes the reception will be the opposite of that, right? The reception will be sympathetic or um, solidarity, all these things. And I don't necessarily find those particularly authentic either. Because the expectation is put upon you. You have to absorb somebody else's belief about what you are and what you represent. And you're just a human being trying to get a cup of coffee or going to an audition. And so... It's as a as a human being trying to navigate the world, you already have something that's put upon you. And so so I feel that and I would assume that a lot of other of us feel that too. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um yeah. I oh. oh, go ahead, Grace. Thank you. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Um, I just wanted to jump into the conversation because um I spent my formative years in Honduras, which I think was very much a gift. And then I'll explain why. Um, there's a huge Palestinian Honduran community in Honduras. Um, Palestinians migrated during like the, back to the Ottoman rule. So growing up there, everyone looked like me. Um, everyone was like me. We all shared like I heard all these stories about people going back to Palestine and coming back. So it was all very like um, very positive, celebratory sense of identity. And um, so I grew up with that, a very like good structure of, of who I am. I'm I'm Palestinian, but I'm also Honduran and also American. I was born here, but spent my formative years in in Honduras. So that that really shaped me um, when I came to the U.S. I lived in um, in Miami for a little bit, and that wasn't necessarily a thing. Like you said, maybe perhaps like the Palestinian thing isn't in the radar. But when I moved to New York, that kind of sense of identity was very important to navigate as an artist, because when if I didn't have that, then I wouldn't know who I was, because the outside world always tries to inform you who you are. And I think that I knew I was like, no, like people would say, oh, this or that. And I'm like, no, but I know who I am. I know where I come from. There's like a whole chunk of people that are just like me and like, you know, and 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 look like me and are like me. So what you're telling me isn't real, like, because I have that strong sense of identity. So that really helped. And then whatever came my way. So I, I, I would have different reactions. One was oh, yeah, you know, you're Palestinian, tell me more. 
and um, or a sense of curiosity, Honduran Palestinian. How did that happen? And on top of it, uh, I'm I'm not that religion matters, but I'm also Christian. How is that even possible? You're not Muslim, so then I would just kind of would turn into this like informative session that I was like, well, you know, and I would just walk them through and they'd be like, oh my God, wow, I didn't know. And then there were other times, um, very, I'm was very naive that I would just kind of get social cues, not nothing very super specific, like you guys mentioned, but there were very kind of, I can't give you spe- like cues to be like, oh, it's not a good time to say you're Palestinian or, or maybe keep that to yourself. I remember having these thoughts at first, right? And I was like, why am I, why should I not jump into the conversation or lead with like, I'm Palestinian? And I, I started getting kind of social cue. And I was confused because I came from a place of like being Palestinian was like the best thing you can be. Like I have stories in my heart about, you know, being told about my ancestors. So I have nothing but like heart emojis of the situation. Um, so, yeah, coming here, um, I started to kind of learn quickly um, what the reality was in this specific place. And I just... I just wanted to point out and that I'm very grateful that my sense of identity continue was and continues to be the foundation for me to be able to just navigate life, like you said, like as a normal person just getting a cup of coffee. The outside uh, perspective is not real because I'm the informer. We are the informers. We tell you who we are. You don't tell us who we are. Mm-hmm. And we celebrate who we are and we will continue to celebrate who we are. So guys, like I'm, I'm, I'm proud to be us and looking at you beautiful faces as artists. So thank you. Thank you. Grace, it's so um, heartening, um, mostly because I, you know, I had written to Hanin and told her that um uh, this will be the kind of largest group of Palestinian artists that I've ever been in, um, uh, you know, and Palestinians in general outside of my family. Um, and so I think sometimes, and I grew up in South Carolina, um, where uh, you feel quite invisible, um, uh, except in very, um, uh, what felt like very, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, like underground ways. Like the only time I was in groups of, of Arabs in general was like at weddings in the back of the Arab grocery store where you had to like go through the, the like staging area behind all the produce and then some secret room where like it was okay to be celebratory. It was very, um, an interesting way, um, to grow up, but, um, I'm a fairly new, um, transplant to New York. Um, I came kind of like in the middle of the pandemic, um, uh, which was an interesting way to ease in. Um, and so my experience of, um, kind of being Palestinian artist in New York is, um, uh, is dealing with something now, and I don't know if anyone else has to deal with it, where maybe you're talking to someone now, and they're, you know, it comes up that you're Palestinian, and you see, I see this look of, like, sinking in the other person, and it's just, like, this feeling of, like, oh, God, it's, like, it's not that I'm ashamed or anything of being Palestinian, it's just that, like, I can't handle the, like, the sinking look in the other person for whatever they're going through, whatever that means for them. But it's just like, now I got to deal with whatever, whatever is behind their mask is what I have to deal with now. And so it's, um, that's been, uh, an interesting, uh, uh, situation to be in. Um, I, I kind of, I love this topic of identity, especially because we all come from like different blended backgrounds and stuff. But like, Mm -hmm. for me, kind of what Henning was talking about with the the name, because my name is Jonathan Akawi, right? At least working in the entertainment sector of like Hollywood, they, people see the name Jonathan and they go, oh my gosh, a Jewish brother. And I go, no, like, 
all respect, of course, but I'm not Jewish, you know, but just happens to be, I guess my name is very popular with a lot of Jewish men and whatnot. And they're like, well, if you're not Jewish, like, what are you then? And I go, well, I'm Middle Eastern, I'm Arab, you know, I'm Arabi. Where specifically? And then it becomes this dance of like, well, if you're assuming that I have this Jewish identity and I'm about to break to you and be like, well, I'm Palestinian, I know what I'm about to get of like, you're, then you're never going to work here because, you know, and again, maybe because it's 3 a.m. here and I'm going to be very unfiltered, but it's like a lot of Zionists do control a lot of um, of the production companies or casting agencies and whatnot that I've dealt with personally. And the minute you tell them I'm Palestinian, it's like, baby, walk out that door then. You have no chance here just because of my name and my identity. And that's just been a very um, difficult thing to kind of dance around in the industry for me. Um, but I've let that file fuel, fuel me, you know, because I like to hear the no's because I know when I get keep getting those no's, keep getting those no's, eventually the yes is going to come through. And so instead of letting it dishearten me of just like you yourself are labeling me as something that I'm not or you're putting me in a box just because this is your perception of me. You know what? Fuck you. Do that, because that's just going to fuel my creativity and fuel my artistry to tell the stories that I want to tell, but also gravitate towards finding a community specifically a community of fellow other Palestinian artists or other Mina and Arab creatives and stuff like that. But um, again, that's my quick 4 a.m. TED talk for you. So <laughs> from my perspective on identity. Um, I just wanted to jump in again. Um, that's okay. If, unless somebody else wanted to say something. Um, I do want to, I do want to say uh, at least I hope, or I think that, with the current climate, things are shifting. Things should shift. I, I I think that like we're coming together more than ever. And um, I've actually gotten to play a Palestinian role like once, um, and it was uh, it just happened to be a Jewish playwright. So just to flip it a little bit, um, obviously not. It's not always the case, but in this particular case, I felt like so happy and so like, I guess, lucky, but I shouldn't be lucky. This should be the norm, right? This collaboration. And um, the we workshopped the play. The play was basically about the two perspectives, the, the Jewish American perspective and the Palestinian perspective. I won't go over the play because we're not talking about the play, but basically it's a story about kind of coming together, right? So, um, and that opportunity was given to me by Emma Goldman Sherman. And she would always say that, you know, she was also told like, this isn't going to get produced. This it, We workshopped it like many years and it turned into like a, we did a radio play right before the pandemic, which is just right on time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but there, I, I do feel, and I do believe that there are going to be a research, like, of of those people and 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 the industry who do want to like uplift Palestinian voices and and showcase our art, and I think we I think a good question to ask ourselves is now that we I I believe we have a moment here. This is a moment. Mm -hmm. Like things are changing. Like we're being heard. Like mm -hmm. the past was, the past has been the past, but. What what are how are we going to move forward now? And I just want to, in in my opinion, my perspective, I just want to like tell everyone that we get to say like who we are, and also like how we're also like tr like treated. Like you know how you're saying like oh I have to deal with this reaction. No, we don't. We, you don't have to. You don't have to. Yeah. You set. We set the tone, right? Like. There is a saying how like you tell people how you how you want to be treated, right? So there is this, but with love. So when whenever I'm thinking of writing a, a script or a play or being in something, I always find that I I I want to create art always rooted from the heart with love, because that is when that is what's going to connect everyone with love and obviously in truth. But I think it's very important that um, our spirit as Palestinians shine as Palestinians, not as people that are struggling. I think that's very important because I don't want the narrative or the only stories being told of the struggle. Yes, the struggle is real and, and we, we are aware of it. We see it, et cetera. But for me 
personally, specifically, I want to create stories and I want to see stories of just like the Palestinian girl next door who's who isn't dealing with like mm-hmm. circumstances because we're we're human. Like and like you said, like just a girl getting a cup of coffee. That's that's exactly what I am. So I think that in some weird way, we also have to inform through our mm-hmm. stories, our art mm-hmm. our whatever that we're just regular people. And the girl next door doesn't want to hear about your reaction that like you deal with that on your own. We're just getting coffee, you know? So I'm, I'm excited about what we're going to do with this moment. I'm excited about all the creatives here. And, but I do think we are leaders. We lead in how, how we're going to see things. We're going to lead because, you know, Palestine isn't just like a physical place for me. It's a place in my heart because I've, I haven't had the chance to go there physically. I've heard mm-hmm. stories. So all I have are stories. So what do I do with these stories? We, we, we turn them into art and we share them with people. And it's through art that people are informed and their perspectives are changed. And we all know that. We've seen a, like a movie or something and something's changed in us. So that's our, not responsibility, but perhaps our, our call to action, our inspiration. I love that, Grace. I love that you're so positive and forward thinking about this. It's a, it's it's really lovely. I think I, I'm a writer, but I've never written a play, you know, or anything like that, or you know, anything for TV. So, so my role up to this point has been interpreting other people's work, and I've played a lot of Arabs and a lot of Arab mothers because I tend to work a lot with young directors, and so I'm always their mother in some form or their professor or something like that, right? So I I feel like um I'm I'm curious for everybody how you deal with um you know the roles that you get. Some of them I, I have come to feel like it's interesting. The reason I brought up the broadcasting earlier, you know, as someone who worked has worked in news for a long time, I felt like I spent a lot of time editing s- news so it was more uh factual and more um uh more even-handed in general and amplifying mm-hmm. stories without tipping a hand necessarily somewhere, like making sure this gets gets covered. So I've spent a lot of my time kind of in the background of things, not really expressing my opinion, whereas theater and acting, that's what I'm doing through someone else's words. So it's been interesting to sort of try and suggest, um, I think when it's an Arab writer, generally we're on the same page, you know? There's something about that communication that um, I can feel very straightforward about. When Mm -hmm. it's someone who's not an Arab writer, I assume that I was brought in to lend, not only be the actor, but lend some sort of authenticity to it. And if something feels, generally the work I've done, it's not that it's been more negative, it's been more, perhaps more, less human, but more positive in a way, right? Like they Pollyanna us. You know, like you're the sad refugee, you're the beautiful refugee mom, or something like that. So not every Palestinian is perfect. Not every human is perfect. You want to make sure they're a whole person and not just an emblem of something that you imagine. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I'm I'm curious how people deal with those roles, you know, roles that are written for Arabs, uh, not written by Arabs, anything like that. So there's... For me personally, um, I'm trying to see if I could get all my media training that I did. Hopefully it doesn't go out the door. But there's a show <laughs> that I auditioned for that's just on, it's currently airing on a streaming service. But um, it I called for like a Palestinian um, character. And specifically, this character was uh, an immigrant to Texas um, who just didn't have papers. So technically an illegal immigrant, right? And he's trying to whatever. But what gra- I, I gravitated towards the role because the role was spe- specifically Arabic speaking, you had to, like all the characters lines were Arabic, which was exciting for me. And especially on a major platform, like a streaming service, I was like, this is very unusual, you know, and the show is created by Amer- Arab American. So it's not a show that's created by like someone back home. And then it's just gonna, you know, air back home. And so I auditioned and the casting agency, which was very ironic, full of white people came back and they're like, you speak the Palestinian dialect. And I'm like, well, that's just my natural tongue. Yes. Um, 
And they're like, because every guy that's auditioned for this role, you know, it's either an Egyptian actor, a Syrian actor, a Lebanese actor. We haven't found a Palestinian actor, um, which is probably its own thing by itself. But my point that I'm trying to make is I auditioned, they liked me and they're like, okay, callbacks, you know, let's bring you back, bring you back. And it was all over Zoom because this was around pandemic 2020, 2021 era. Every time I would get receive new scripts of new sides and whatnot, the characters slowly started to change, which was very intriguing to me because I was like, why are you taking like... What I loved about the character was, although you're kind of making the stereotype of like an illegal immigrant or whatever, the character had a lot of heart and had a lot to say about the systematic oppression that, you know, our judicial system has against immigrants and all this kind of stuff. But the more and more they changed the script, the more and more they kind of dumbed the character down and he just became more about the jokes and more about the, you know, the pointing fingers and laughing like, oh, he's not westernized. He's not American enough. Ha ha ha. And I started to get uncomfortable because I was like, why are we diminishing a Palestinian character who has this beautiful story arc that you've told me and shown me to just jokes? And they're like, well, it's just, you know, we realized that maybe the audience won't relate to him as much because it's just there's a lot we have to talk about education wise about what Palestine is and whatnot. And I'm like, but the show has a Palestinian lead. The show is about Palestinians. Why are you dumbing down important story arcs like this? And they're just like, well, it's just, you know. It, the character's not working. So I, you know, decided at some point that I'm like, this is not for me because I don't want to be portraying a stereotype of what a person thinks a Palestinian is to me in my mind when they're taking all the juicy stuff for the character I was up for and giving it to another actor on the show or another character on the show. Um, all to find out also that the show itself, um, like majority of the writing room, there was only one Palestinian on board and the majority happened to be um, other Arabs, which is awesome. But I was just like, why? Like, we need more Palestinians out there to just point out those things and be like, maybe we don't make fun of the Palestinians in the show. Maybe we actually focus on other things than just like the comedy is going to, you know. But again, that's, yeah. (laughs) There is a way to write Palestinians funny without it having to be about immigration and um, making us mm-hmm. be the, the idiot that doesn't know anything about the legal system. Mm-hmm. I went in for a TV show that <clears throat> wasn't specifically a Palestinian character, but an Arab character. I remember the, the breakdown said Middle Eastern, North African. Um, uh, I submitted for it, and then the show came out on a streaming service, a major streaming service, and and I remember the character had a, a mom as well, an Arab, a North African or Arab mother character, um, and then once it came to streaming service, it was they were Daisy, which happens a lot. Um, I don't remember where, but it it, it was South Asian Daisy, and I was like, okay, again. Um, it happens in theater too. I have gone up for multiple roles that end up going to and being accepted by non-Arab actors um, that are just um, darker skinned than I am, which takes me to the colorism of casting as a, as a pa- Palestinian or as an Arab period, because a lot of casting directors and just artists and human beings see Arab as like one or three shades or looks. And if you don't fall in that, then you, you, you're not castable as an Arab. <clears throat> But I'm also not castable as any Latin characters, any Italian character, anyone that when I read, when I was in college, I was studying to be the ethnically ambiguous actor that could play anything. And then as soon as I graduated, everything shifted to where we were like, no. Daisy actors can can we want to see them playing Daisy roles? Arab actors, we want to see them playing Arab roles. And everyone got really super specific about the checkbox, right? Which for representation was a beautiful thing, but then also became a shitty thing 
because the only people, at least in New York theater, the only people that were being completely passed over in that regard were Middle Eastern North African actors. Um, anyone could play our roles. Anyone. And I mean, I've watched it for the last six years. Latin actors, Desi actors, um, white actors that just have curly hair and darker skin than I do, or a, a fuller beard. Um, these are the things that make an Arab actor in New York theater. <laughs> or uh, an, an Arab character, excuse me. And that's been incredibly frustrating to watch because our characters already, as we've just discussed, already don't come with depth often and, and nuance and, uh, well, uh, an Arab writer, first of all. Um, and oftentimes, if you are cast, you're, you're doubling as like the cultural consultant. There was a Palestinian musical a few years ago that was being written. I don't know where it is now, but there was not a single Arab or Palestinian on the team until they cast me as their lead. And I said, how are, how are all the actors in this piece non-Arab? So now, not a creative team, not an actor in this entire room is Arab and all of it falls on me? No. And I left. I, I, I asked if they were interested in hi hiring a cultural consultant or if that was um, talked about, and it wasn't. Um, so I left. And uh, uh, sh knowing that I dodged a bullet. Because it's also traumatic fucking shit. It's like uh, you're like writing a musical that is set in and talk like the second intifada and like all of these traumatic things that I have to go through alone in a 30 person room. No, no. Is that safe? I don't think that's safe. I, I know that's something every one of us have gone through, has gone through watching a character dwindle into something else. Sorry, guys. No, I just wanted to kind of um, second, like what you're saying about the the, the casting process. It, it, is, it is very frustrating. It's, it's um, I think that's one of the reasons um, I, I became a writer. Like I was just kind of wrote for fun, but it's like, Oh yeah. Uh, we have to, we have to tell our stories. Otherwise, if it's someone else, they don't they don't know they're not going to do all the things to make this like a true story. And to have, like you said, like you'd be carrying all that by yourself. Like no one will understand that. But your fellow, you know, so that's why I I just I, I became a writer. We have to tell our stories. And again, back to the. Um, it, it kind of loops back to what I was saying earlier. We have to inform who we are. I'm, I, I'm Honduran, like I'm Pal Palestinian, like both, both sides of my family. Um, but my family moved to Honduras. So, so much of my experience has been, you're not the, the, the Latina look or whatever. I speak Spanish fluently. Like I've gone, you know what I'm saying? It's never going to be enough. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, um, on the Arab side, it's also been challenging because I don't fit necessarily all the boxes. I I don't speak Arab like fluently, so that's also like a, like another thing. But again, because I have this strong sense of identity, I don't feel any less Arab, and I think that's so important. If anyone's like an Arab American that doesn't speak Arab, like it doesn't make you any less at all. So um, that is always going to be the case. I've been told I'm not this, I'm not that. I'm like. You're not telling me who I am. I'm going to show you what a Latina looks like. I'm going to show you what an Arab looks like. I'm going to show you what a Palestinian is just by being myself, not doing acrobatics for you or putting on a show. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I think we have to keep our sense of identity strong. And I don't feel like we need to like prove anything. 
We just need to tell our stories. We need to write. And if like you did tell, tell people like, Hey, this isn't okay. Have you thought about this? You did everything right. The rest is out of your control. I, you know, it hasn't been easy for me being, you know, cast at, like at all, just because of this mixed situation or they don't, you know, whatever, but I don't care. I'm going to continue writing. I'm going to continue doing my thing. And, and, um, the success is that I'm going to continue to be an artist. I'm not going to let anyone tell me or derail me or, you know, yes, it's frustrating, but this is how, how change happens, what we're doing now, talking about it, being together and let, write that TV show. If you haven't written a TV show, write that TV show. You, you might meet someone that could, will produce it. Write that article. Talk to that person. Let's go, guys. It's time. Um, Grace, uh, if, if you have time available, I am happy to pass along the money I give to my therapist every week. I will just send it to <laughs> you, and we can meet every week um, uh, because I am happy to do that. Um, uh, yeah, you know, um, as a director, I, uh, it, it's, I, more recently, I've been uh, approached by many different organizations, mostly white led organizations. Um, uh, you know, they finally decided that they're going to do, um, their Arab play, not even a play about Palestinians, just any Arab at all. Um, and they do expect, uh, uh, me to be the cultural consultant for the play. So it's kind of like, you know what, I'm not, I don't know what the Afghani experience is. So maybe I shouldn't be doing the night runner if all I'm, if I'm going to be the only one in the room that is going to be helping lead this project or, um, uh, or I don't speak Arabic fluently. And so you're going to need to have someone else on the team. I can't be everything to everyone. Um, uh, and also it's, um, maybe this doesn't matter, but it kind of does matter to me, um, why someone's doing the piece. Um, you know, I had an organization approach me about doing a piece and I'm like, why are you doing this piece? Um, and they were like, oh, well, we really want a, like a, a Palestinian voice. And I'm like, I, I appreciate that. And also, that cannot be the only reason you're doing this piece of artwork, because then that's just tokenizing us. And so, like, do the piece because it speaks to a universal struggle, or it speaks to a universal truth, or it celebrates joy, or any of these things, or we need to hear it right now because it talks about the you know, how the system infiltrates our daily lives. Like, those are reasons to do a piece. Don't just do it because you're checking off a box so that you can feel good that you did a Pulitzer Prize-winning play by a very lovely playwright, but that's not our only story. <laughs> I was just going to say one, both Grace and Adam, I, I love what you're saying. I, I was thinking about one particular thing regarding casting. So again, because I haven't written anything, so my, you know, my efforts are put in or on a specific in a specific realm. I was helping someone cast a play recently, and there's four of us in it. Two of us are are Arabs. The script is written by an Arab. Um. And the one of the the other one of the characters dropped out. The the male actor dropped out, and they have had such a time finding someone to play the role. I don't. I think sometimes people make an effort to find actors who, uh, uh, you know, actually represent what they're looking for, and they can't always find us. Right? Maybe you found an actor who happens to be an Arab, but doesn't act fit, but maybe you can't find them at all. I remember if anybody knows the playwright Yusuf Elgindi, who's based in Seattle, saying that he was maybe 40 years old until he could actually fill out a play with an Arab cast. You know, he could not find the actors. It wasn't that long ago. I want to say it was maybe 20 years ago. Betty Shemeh, is that her name? You know, they had, she had a play on Broadway that did really well and everybody in it was Italian. 
you know? It was a play about Arabs and everybody was Italian because they couldn't find a cast at that time. Ch times have changed, but I do think sometimes it's not for lack of trying. It's or lack of lack of intent. Maybe they're not looking hard enough. But um sometimes I think, you know, I don't know. Is that on us? I don't really know. But I, I think sometimes it's hard to find what you're looking for, or it seems like it must be, right? I just, it yeah, must be. I, I think it's directly related to the fact that not, not a lot of institutions are going to jump at telling Palestinian stories, and not a lot of producers are going to jump at giving money. So a lot of the opportunities that come to us are, are a lot of the times unsurvivable. Sure. The, the kind of, it's, it's just, yeah, it's really low pay for a lot of work, which, and I understand you can't find the Arab actors, but sometimes you have to find the money first and find the funding first, which again, I know is hard because not a lot of people want to tell our stories. But it, I, I think it's directly related. I've yeah. also seen as a producer myself with people pitching the ideas or when I'm at film festivals for concepts of like funding to get funding and whatnot. The minute you mention Palestine or like, oh, this is a story about a Palestinian. And again, it might have nothing to do with the trauma of being a Palestinian or politics. It's just like you're saying, a girl who gets, grabs a cup of coffee, she just happens to be Palestinian. But the minute you mention that word, it's like, oh, it's a political story. And you're like, it's it's not. Did you bother reading and hearing my pitch, you know? And I feel like a lot of that is just because I experienced that with another project I just did and I had to self-produce it myself was just the minute we mentioned the word Palestine. It's like, oh, it's politi politics. We don't want to get involved. And I'm like, did you read the script I sent you? Because if you did, you would understand that had nothing to do with that, you know? Um, but I think kind of what you're saying, Hanin, is like also the beauty now, like 20 years later from the story you were giving is the advent of social media. Like it's just been wonderful to be able to meet and somehow connect with other artists online, especially for me, that it's like, you know, like clearly all of you guys are on the East Coast, but I'm on the West Coast. But through a platform like this, we've at least been able to connect and whatnot. That I hope things moving forward, do change that we're building some sort of like online community of sorts. So we can find one another real quick where it's like, hey, I'm doing a play. Can you make it to New York, you know, and work at three months? Like, inshallah, that's what we can get to of just kind of being able to give each other opportunities, especially, especially when, um, you know, people aren't so quick to give us opportunities. Yeah, I wonder if also some of it is, uh, okay, this is, controversial take so don't eat me alive and i'm working in draft uh for a long time i would say when my father immigrated um there which wasn't that long ago um there there was a push to disappear you know um to uh assimilate to you know, uh, white, be white, be white, be white. Um, uh, and I feel like that's very, very complicated historically with Arabs in the United States and, and how that all came to pass. But I also wonder if there was uh, uh, one of the reasons why it had been harder was one funding, not wanting to tell the story, lack of trying, and also a desire to not be identified as different, not be seen as um, other, and so kind of like uh, the ability to disappear. Um, you know, it, it's weird. It's complicated and weird. Um, uh, but I also wonder if that's, you know, part of the problem. And I hope this doesn't get me uh, prevent my career from happening, but like, this is a gentle call into someone like, you know, we have a leader of the American theater who is a Palestinian American and has, what has he said or done? Um, you know, Joe Hodge at the Guthrie. Um, I haven't heard anything. Um, and he kind of seems to kind of gently disappear and there could be lots of reasons for that um i also know he's done wonderful things but i think it's very easy for people to 
see past a lot? I would say at the risk of also um, getting bludgeoned <laughs> later. Um, and I mean that metaphorically also, obviously. Um, I think I think it's definitely a generational thing. I mean, you know, there's I have Mexican cousins who don't speak Spanish because they were told, you know, Spanish is bad, you know, in the 70s and 80s. And and so there, it goes for not just, obviously, um, Arabs, um, but I'm torn about this. And I know we're getting close to the end of time. I could talk about this forever. I'm torn about it because I came up sort of in the generation of not not hiding but also not expressing myself. And so it's been it's been a, a sea change for me in some ways. Um I could express myself in a certain way in 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 journalism kind of behind the scenes, but to do it forward as an actor and certainly social media is an odd thing. Um it's not even about Palestine, it's about my own particular proclivities about anything, right? And so not to defend those people, but I think especially if you're it may not be the way they want to express themselves if it's social media related. It's on behalf of your theater, that's a whole other thing too, right? You're talking about funding. You're talking about your audiences. It's not to defend them, but I can understand where that comes from because you're so, you've spent, every time you popped your head up, you got what Wasim got or what any of else, us have gotten over your lives. I have gotten the worst comments in my lifetime as a child, you know? You get that your whole life and it's hard. So I think... I, I, it's so important now to be forward. And so I'm working on it myself. Mm-hmm. I don't think everybody's great at that. I just don't, I'm not as articulate, to be honest with you, as I'd like to be. You know, you can talk with me one on one, I can talk forever, but in a broadcast situation sometimes, like social media, I find it difficult. And so, um, yeah, I think that's what that's about. As we start to, um, get to our 10 minute warning here. I'm curious what the hope is for folks in this room for the future of Palestinian art in America. What would your, what are your hopes and dreams for that? For us to redefine what it is to be a Palestinian. We already know what we are, but for other people who don't understand it, for that to to change. And so we can all kind of have like more of a leveling field when and we could just say we're Palestinian and it's not like necessarily a trigger for some people. And uh, it's not going to be overnight because uh, it's been, you know, such a long time, you know, that this has happened. But we can I believe we can dismantle and through art. And we're all here for it. I think more of us need to be in in these decision making rooms, um, and not always the storytelling rooms um, or the story writing rooms. Um, my hope and dream is to see more than one uh, theater company in New York City that um, centers our stories, um, and to see more institutions make space for Palestinian stories. What can institutions do to ensure safety for Palestinian artists? Hear us, like literally listen to us and talk to us. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Ask us what we need and what we want in terms of that stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. I think that's a big thing, asking, right? Rather than you having to feel um uh some sort of conflict about coming forward when you feel like something is not right or in Wasim's case having to leave the room you know having to let something go because it doesn't feel safe right um mm-hmm. yeah and i i just on a side note like being in community like this i think is really um uh encouraging and um it reminds me um that we're all, we have such similar experiences, which I always find really heartening, you know, when you talk, you hear about people, any kind of people, you know, how close we really are. And I, I, I would hope that people would see us as everybody else, but I also like to see we're kind of, you know, our shared experiences. It makes me feel, you know, seen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want to echo that 
Queen and say that every time I am in a room with another Palestinian artist, we have this kind of ancient, like, holding of each other and like accepting of each other's energy in this space and recognize that there are billions and billions and billions of dollars that go towards making sure that this never happens. Another Palestinian meets another Palestinian and shares our struggle and shares our story and shares our history. So let's celebrate that. Mm -hmm. that even from all of the money that is spending towards the walls and the bombs and the we're here in this rehearsal room and we are so fortunate that we are here Mm -hmm. yeah i don't have to elaborate on that we're so fortunate that we are here yeah Mm -hmm. there's also something about an I think this takes a lot of time is to be allowed to be um, like Hanin was saying, um, seen to be. And I mean, like as a full, complex, fallible, funny human in the world um, uh, that it, it kind of boggles my mind that to uh, have hope that will be seen as um complex humans uh, is a hope that I have. Um, uh, But it is. um, uh, And that's something institutions can start doing right away. That doesn't cost any money. Mm -hmm. It's free. And uh, uh, that would be great. Kind of off that point, I mean, if there's any institutions that will be are listening right now or watching later, like there's no problem saying sorry for being ignorant. Like it's okay, you know. Educate yourselves. Come forward and ask us questions and learn about us. You know, especially in a time again where we cannot necessarily talk about us without being silenced or suppressed, oppressed. What you know the word I'm trying to say? All, all of the words. All of the press. <laughs> 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 well, lovely. We're 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 coming down to the wire here, and I know we can all probably talk for ages and ages. Um, but are there any last thoughts to wrap up our lovely conversation this morning? I would I, just yes. Oh, go ahead, I just want to say to I want to amplify the call of the Freedom Theater in Janine Falasin that is saying that the third intifada will be a cultural one. We are the only ones that can share out our culture and tell our stories. It has been fascinating to watch some of the other panels and see how people in different realms, whether they're journalists or whether they're artists or or what have you, um, how they're living now. Um, um, yeah, I just think this is a tremendous event and I'm really proud to be a part of it and, and really pleased to get to know you all today. I would love to, uh, as your token Lebanese friend here today, thank you. Uh, <laughs> ally, from, we love an ally. Ally, you know. <laughs> Speak um, better, Tina. <laughs> it's it's been such a treat to get to hear from you all and hear from your perspectives. I think um, I would like to take a brief minute and moment um, just to just to say uh, that we collectively pray for an immediate ceasefire, the end of the genocide, the liberation of the Palestinian people, and I'd love to hold this intention and this silence for just a moment as we wrap up here. Thank you. Um, Amazing. Well, thank you so much to Adam, John, Wasim, Hanin, Grace. Your time and honesty today was so beautiful and it was so lovely to see it all grow 
uh, in safety as we all got to know each other. Um, it was it was really a wonderful treat to spend some time with you all this morning. Um, Thank you to Golden Thread, Arts to Action, HowlRound, our stage managers, everyone who is uplifting this program. We're really so proud to be a part of it. Um, At this time, I'd love to welcome session 17, reading excerpts from Dalia Taha's fireworks. And this will be moderated by Q Mars Ha'ari, lecturer of theater and drama at the American University of Kuwait. I'll pass it over to you.